with major brokers like TD Ameritrade, EJ, Charles Schwab have recently cut the commission to zero. Which stock broker is the best for you? Hi, my name is Kyle, your average investor, and today I'm gonna give you the top five investing apps and which one may be better for you. All my top five investing app has zero commission fee, so Acorn and Stash does not make the list. Now I do have account with all five of this investing apps, so I will give you my honest opinion on which one may be better for you, depend on what type of investor or trader you are. I will also provide the timeline in the description, so if you want to jump ahead onto any section that you're interested in, go ahead, look at the description and just click on it, it will bring you there. The first one is Robinhood. You probably heard Robinhood before, it bring a lot of millennial into the stock market. It is the first one that come out with zero commission trading with a very beginner friendly app. And because of Robinhood, it attracts so many young investor and young trader into the stock market. The pros of Robinhood is it lets you trade stock, ETF, option, cryptocurrency, and actually it is the only one on top five list that enable you to trade cryptocurrency. So if cryptocurrency is your thing, look no further. This is it. I think one of the reason why Robinhood becomes so popular is because how easy it is to use the app. It literally take a couple minutes for you to deposit money, find a company that you want to invest in and start become a shareholder of the company. After all the major brokers start to cut the commission, Robinhood is not backing down without a fight. It's now offering money management. Robinhood will give you 1.8% APY of your idle money, and it is $1.25 million FDIC insured. The way they're doing this is by putting your money across five different banks. Each bank will be $250,000 in FDIC insured. With all that feature, Robinhood is still lacking on some of the feature that the other four broker offer. The ability to short stock for active trader, retirement plan account, the ability to buy fractional share. Now this one is a big one because if you want to invest in a company like Amazon with Robinhood, you have to buy a full share of Amazon. And a full share of Amazon running right now is around 1800. And most young investor does not have that full amount to invest in the whole company right away or it would take them a really long time to save up to that amount every time they want to buy one share. Robinhood also doesn't have an auto reinvest feature, which if you receive dividend, Robinhood will just leave your money there, it will not auto reinvest for you, which may be a breaker for some dividend investor. Coming up on number two is Weibo. Weibo is a broker that every YouTuber recommend right now. Is it really meet up to the expectation of everyone? Or is it because they're offering an attractive referral bonus? Two free stock for signing up and deposit more than $100 with the second stock value up to $1,000. Weibo offer a fairly easy to use mobile app that packed with bunch of key data, enough for you to do a full fundamental analysis on a company. On top of that, it also offering hand down the best charting for mobile apps out there with different time frame you can look at. You can pinch in to zoom in and out of the chart, scroll left and right to different time frame. You also can add indicator for your technical analysis. Weibo also have decent amount of shortable stock for active trader. Weibo also have a desktop apps that attract a lot of beginner active trader. It come with decent charting software with indicator customizable workspace, time of sale, active news source, hotkey execution. Weibo also have margin account, which means if you deposit 10,000, they will give you 30,000 to day trade with. Now, what is Weibo lacking? Weibo, just like Robinhood, it does not have partial share buying and does not allow you to auto reinvest. And on top of that, does not have what Robinhood offer, which is money management. Also, the Weibo desktop apps, even though it tried to aim at active trader, but from my experience, a couple of times I tried to buy a very active stock, it kind of delayed almost half a second to a second for it to execute my order. Now that does play a big part if you trading a very active stock. On top of that, it does not have level two, and then level one, you actually had to pay for it. And their hotkey execution, um, is very limited. 
is very imp impractical. I would not use it. Coming up on number three is M1 Finance. Dividend Grow Investor love this broker, and there's obvious reason why. M1 Finance offer the ability to buy fractional share, up to one 100,000 of the share. That means you can invest two cents into Amazon and become a partial shareholder. M1 Finance also have an auto invest feature, which means the amount of dividend that you receive, it will split up and repurchase all the stock that in your portfolio. And with M1 Finance, once you set up your portfolio, turn on auto deposit, turn on auto reinvest, now your portfolio will be autopilot. And as long as you don't need to make any change in your portfolio, this will be the most passive investing ever. You don't even need to move muscle after that. M1 Finance allows you to set the percentage of your portfolio that you're willing to invest in the company. So every time you deposit money, it will buy the stock that fall in value to bring it up to the percentage that you set compared to the rest of your portfolio. So if you take a look at my M1 Finance, for example, I set my target for my dividend focused portfolio to 70% and right now it's 65% and AMTD I only set at 5% but right now it's at 22.6% because I got some gain from it and Baidu I set it at 10% right now it's only 5.2% so next time I deposit it will invest in the one where the actual which is right here is less than my target until where the actual is greater or equal to the target so you got to make sure the company that you put on your portfolio is a company that you believe in in the long term because you're gonna keep buying the dip and if you keep dipping that's the stock most likely you all gonna buy and if you do not know how to create a portfolio for yourself, M1 Finance have wide selection of preset portfolio that you can follow. Not only that, you can follow the portfolio of the investor that you like if they're willing to share their portfolio through M1 Finance. All this feature is great for retirement plan account, which M1 does offer. And yes, M1 Finance does have a phone number so you can call in for customer support, which the other two previous broker does not have. Now with all that great feature, here are the cons of M1 Finance. It's really hard for beginner to understand how M1 Finance work and how to navigate through the app to create their own portfolio. It doesn't allow you to manually buy the stock that you want at the price that you want, since it only trade one time a day for non-paying customer. And if you want to add another stock to your portfolio, now you have to find out what percentage of that stock that you want to buy and readjust all the percentage of your portfolio. Moving on to number four, which is E-Trade. E-Trade was one of my favorite broker for active trader, even when they were charging commission. It have almost everything that active trader look for. A very responsive desktop apps with customizable workspace. You're able to create multiple watch lists and stock scanner. You have good charting software with price alert, an active new fee, and it also have free level two. You can also choose to route your execution, and it also have one click trading for active trader. E-Trade also have great customer service. If anything wrong, you can give them a call. Like if your power ever shut down during middle of your trade, you actually can give them a call to execute your trade before you lose all your money. Yes. Speaking from a painful experience, here are the cons of E-Trade. E-Trade mobile apps just straight up suck. It would take a pretty long time to learn how to navigate through the mobile apps and it's not even pleasing to look at compared to the previous three broker. It is understandable in their case because they aim toward more to active trader and most active traders trade with their desktop instead of their mobile phone. Like I said earlier, E-Trade almost meet every requirement for active trader, except they do not have hotkey execution, which can break a deal for some trader. And also, you cannot buy fractional share with E-Trade. The last broker on the list for investing apps is Charles Schwab. I recently just opened up an account with Charles Schwab, and when they claiming that they have number one customer service compared to all other broker, it is no joke. If you have any question, you can give them a call and you would able to speak to a live person within a couple minutes. When I sign up with Charles Schwab, they automatically send me a checkbook, send me a car, send me a bunch of envelopes that have prepaid stamp. 
just in case if I need to deposit check, I can send it to them. And note, I did not request them to send me any of that. And one of the reason I signed up with Charles Schwab is because they're able to connect all my external bank to a Charles Schwab so I can keep track of all my transaction. Charles Schwab also allow you to deposit check through their mobile apps and you can use your car to pull out any ATM and they will reimburse you with the full amount fee. Also, they do not charge you fee for a checking account. Plus, they actually give you some money for your checking account. It turned out to be, if I calculate it right, 0.15%. It also have a decent trading desktop apps that aim toward active trader. Now, Charles Swap is coming out with fractional share repurchase. I don't know how it gonna work, but if they able to let you buy the stock at the price you want and at the time you want, it would be the only broker that allowed those features. Now here is a cons for Charles Schwab. Even if you connect to your external bank account, it doesn't seem like it update because this is the same balance I have when I first connect it to my external bank account. Both the desktop apps and the mobile app is just mediocre. It's not anything great that stand out from all the other broker. It just, you can execute trade, you can just do simple stuff, but it's not intuitive. It take a while to learn and it also not pleasing to the eye. With all that said, here's my recommendation for each broker, depend on which type of trader and investor you are. I would recommend Robinhood to any beginner investors just because the app is just so simple and easy to use. I would also recommend Robinhood to long-term investor, again, just because it's just so easy to buy and you can just leave it there. And what I mean by active dividend trader is if you wanna buy an individual stock when it dip and you do not have to continuously change your portfolio percentage just to buy more more of that dividend stock. As for Weibo, I would recommend this for swing trader because you actually can do a lot of technical analysis and fundamental analysis on the company with Weibo. Honestly, Weibo only lost to Robinhood on the fact it does not have money management. But if that doesn't matter to you, and you know how to use Weibo, I would recommend Weibo over Robinhood. I would recommend M1 Finance to any dividend investor and long-term investor who just want to turn on their auto deposit, auto invest, and just leave the portfolio there for autopilot. And as for E-Trade, I would only recommend for active trader. And as for Charter Swap, I like it as a banking and it's just so convenient when you can just move your money from checking account to your brokerage account and trade it right away. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. Please click the like and subscribe button, turn on your notification bell to help out your struggling YouTuber. And you have a blessed day.